as you probably know, I've been a uh, been critical, to say the least, of AMSA Crumac. AMSA Crumac was developed before any imaging. It was really based on optical pachymetry and keratometry. And I don't think anyone in practice today has even seen an optical pachymeter. It was also based only on apical reading. And we know that the cones rarely are apical. In other words, the thinnest point is not at the center of the cornea. And the biggest limitation of Amsel Crumac is that it completely ignores the posterior surface. Now, it was an appropriate classification back in the 1940s and 50s when it was developed, when all we had were contact lenses or penetrating keratoplasty. Because we only intervened when we had alterations on the anterior surface. In other words, you already lost vision. We, we didn't have treatments such as cross-linking, which allow us to intervene at a much earlier stage and to prevent the loss of vision, not just to treat the loss of vision. So we needed to come up with a way to classify disease that recognizes A, the new treatments, and B, the full anatomical layers. So the ABCD classification looks at, first of all, not an apical region, but the, or where the cone is located, so at the thinnest point, and also measures both the anterior and posterior cornea, as well as corneal thickness and distance visual acuity. The main advantage, again, is that now we're recognizing changes on the posterior surface, which allows us to recognize and characterize disease at a much earlier stage and to identify disease before we actually lose vision. That's a question I get all the time. And I know two, everyone thinks that the BAD, the BAD, and the ABCD are very similar, and they're actually totally different. The BAD display is designed to screen normal patients, to separate normal from abnormal. It requires to be, I don't wanna say accurate, but to be totally reliable, eight millimeters of coverage. Keratoconic patients are very, very different. It's often very difficult to get a full eight millimeter coverage in keratoconic patients. The ABCD looks at the anterior and posterior radius of curvature taken from a three millimeter optical zone centered on the thinnest point. Rec this allows us to image keratoconic patients without having to rely on eight millimeters of coverage. But a three millimeter zone would not be an adequate zone to look at to screen normal patients. So the bed again, is a device to screen refractive patients. Yes, it will diagnose keratoconus, but it's designed to screen normal patients, while the ABCD is there to classify ectatic disease. Sounds similar, but actually very, very different. Well, hopefully it'll convince at some point the US insurers to change their insane policy of requiring only worsening of already decreased vision before we intervene. In other words, not all, but most carriers in the US require that you actually have loss of vision that gets worse before they'll approve cross-linking. And I give an analogy, that would be kind of like your doctor saying, well, you have high blood pressure, but I can't prescribe blood pressure meds until you have your first stroke. It's insane. So the design of the ABCD progression display, again, was to allow us to determine when we have true, actual, statistically significant change at the earliest possible period. I mean, medicine should not be treating disease after it occurs. The goal is to prevent the sequela of disease. And currently, at least in the US, there's a big impediment because of what the insurance carriers demand, and they demand changes on the anterior surface. We should convince them, and hopefully eventually it'll change, that will allow us to intervene at the earliest possible change where we can document true statistical change, in, but again, prevent loss of vision, not stabilize it after it already occurred. Well, the display looks at, again, four parameters. Only three are objective. The A, which is the anterior radius of curvature, taken from a three millimeter zone centered on the thinnest point. B or back, which is posterior radius of curvature, again from a three millimeter zone centered on the thinnest point. And C, corneal thickness, which is the corneal thickness at the thinnest point of the cornea. D is distance visual acuity, and that's user-operated. 
only the first three have to have uh, confidence intervals to, to determine change. And what we've done is we looked at two different populations, both normal and keratoconic, and we determined when there's both an 80 and 95% confidence interval for change. We recommend that you probably have at least three exams over time and look at both each parameter and determine either when one parameter reaches a 95% confidence interval or two parameters reach at the 80%. For those of you who do your math, two parameters at 80% effectively is the same, but one parameter statistically at 95%. In general, we recommend at least probably three separate exams, but if you have a very young patient, again, it's up to the user to determine based on risk analysis whether they want to wait or intervene. The maps are there only to assist the surgeon, not to replace the surgeon's decision-making process. Very, very age-dependent. We all know that the very young patients, 18 and below, 15 and below, can have very rapid change. If I had a suspicious map on, let's say, a 15-year-old, I probably would see him back in about, or her, back in about six weeks. If I had someone who was in their mid-40s that we pick up, or let's say someone who came in uh, for just routine exams and we pick up an abnormal map, at that age, I may say come back in six, six, six months. So it's really an age-dependent and also a risk-dependent. Depends on the severity of the disease and the age of the patient. And also family history. As I said earlier, we probably would use three exams over time. And again, that over period of time really would depend on the age of the patient. And when any one parameter reaches that 95% interval or two at the 80% in interval. But again, I wanna stress as, as with the bad display, with the ABC classification and the progression display, the surgeon needs to make the final decision. These are to give us additional information, but it's a clinical decision that the surgeon needs to make. Thank you very much for your Thank time. Thank you.